Now, the changes to the building regulations, document L, on the 15th of June 2022, has now incorporated BS 7593-2019 on testing central heating water when we install, service or repair central heating systems. And it's got me worrying. First of all, we've got to put inhibitors in. Now, there are three different types of inhibitors. There's organic particles, which binds to the metal in the central heating system to stop it corroding. There's adonic, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> particles which stick to the surface of the metal and give it a protective layer. Then there's cathodic inhibitors, which bind with the hard water salts to form an insoluble layer. So as well as the three different types, there are four different chemicals used. And they are potassium, tetraborate, tetrahydrate, sodium molybdate, or molybdate, whatever, sodium nitrate, and 222-nitrolethanol. I'll put it here, because I can't say it. So they're the main different types of inhibitor. Now on the bottles, does it actually tell us what chemicals they've got in there? No just the manufacturer's name and to the standards and all the rest of it. So when we come to test this water, we don't exactly know what we're testing for. And there are loads of different types and ways of testing water. So in this video, I'm gonna put a few little things together, you know, which I've made up, just to see whether these tests actually work or not, or whether they show you've got the same inhibitor in or not. Because this is worrying me, this really is. That down the line, engineers are going to get customers being irate with them and trying to sue them because they didn't put the right inhibitor in when they, when they installed their appliances. Let's get on with it and find out what these tests are I'm going to do and let's see if these inhibitors are all the same or they're all different. Now for the experiment, I am using these three inhibitors. So I've just been to screw fix uh, this morning and bought these three because inhibitor only has a shelf life of one year. So I see a lot on social media about people selling off inhibitor and cleaner and stuff like that. But if it's more than a year old, it's useless anyway. So first of all, the uh, Flowmaster, this stuff, cost me £9.19p plus the VAT. The Fernox, so this one, the F1, that cost me £12.89 plus fat. And the Sentinel, the last one, cost me £13.58 plus fat. As you can see, two of the same size, and one is double the size. So they do 100 litres. Well, technically that does 130 litres, but that does 100 litres and that does 100 litres. So obviously I think this one is not as concentrated as these when it comes to the chemicals inside them. When I do the experiment, I'm probably gonna to have to use double the amount of this to compare it with these. Now the test uh, equipment we're gonna use, we're gonna use the Scale Master test kit. We're gonna use the Fernox Espress inhibitor test kit. And we're gonna use the AD ProCheck uh, test kits to see if these test kits pick up all these different inhibitors. So these are all sealed. I'm gonna give them a good shake to make sure they're all mixed up. And they've all got seals on them, as you can see. That one's sealed. So I've not messed with any of them. That one's sealed. And that one's sealed. So what I've got is 100 millilitres of water for each one of the tests. And this is just the tap water from the training centre. So if I was to put this in the heating systems here, this is the water we've got. And I live in the northwest. So uh, our water is reasonably soft. 
I can't find my pH papers. I don't know where Kate's put them. So I wanted to dip and see what the pH of the water is, but I'll find that out later. Now let's just move these out of the way for a sec. Uh, that's the Flowmaster Cup. That's the Sentinel one. And that has to be the Furnox one. So get my knife. I'm going to open these up. So I've got three new different syringes and I've marked them up so I don't get them mixed up. Now I've got 100 millilitres of water in here and there's 500 millilitres in that, 500 in that and a litre in that and they all do 100 litres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a half a millilitre in that, half a millilitre in that and a millilitre in that because this is twice the amount of these two, so half the strength, even though that does 130 litres, but we'll, we'll take that out. It's not going to be a lot I'm putting in, because I've only got small amounts of water. So let's do the Flowmaster first, so let's suck some up, and then I'm going to put half a millilitre, which is there, into there. Wasn't a lot, was it? Let's just make sure we get it out. So that's that one done. Let's get the lid back on. Because I'll only knock it over. So same with the Furnox. There's the And then I'm going to put one milliliter in this one because like I say it's twice as much liquid. So half the strength. Got one milliliter in that one. Give them a mix up. As you can see, they're all very, very clear. So let's just give us a clean up and get rid of them. So the first test I'm going to use is these Furnox Express inhibitors. So obviously I'm expecting these to pick up the Furnox, but I don't know what chemicals, different uh, inhibitors are in these different manufacturers. Let's. Like dip it in for a second and then shake it off, lay it down, dip it in, shake it off, lay it down. And they're changing colour so they're definitely picking something up. So let's leave them for a minute to dry out and then let's have a look at the test. So let's have a look at the Flowmaster first compared to the colour chart so there's definitely some inhibitor in there I do, it's hard to say whether it's a hundred or a hundred and fifty especially with my bloody eyes so I would say that's I would say closer to a hundred than it is to a hundred and fifty or somewhere in the middle so that's the Flowmaster one the Furnox one is pretty much the same. So you can see there actually is inhibitor. It is saying there is some inhibitor in there. But it is hard to say what's whether it's 100 or 150. And the Sentinel one. No, this one definitely is a different colour 
and it's round about the 100 to the 150 so we can see a difference in that one but remember that one's a bit weaker than those well I'm guessing it's a bit weaker because it's double the amount but uh, you can certainly see that's more like 100 rather than 150 so the indicator is picking something up there but not giving us an accurate enough measurement I don't think anyway but it is telling us there is some in there so the first test kit I'm going to use is the AD Pro Check to see whether the AD Pro Check gives us a better indication of uh, the how much inhibitors in there. But it, again, it's still using test strips. So inside here, there are test strips which we're going to compare with a card and then on the app. So let's do that one. So I've laid three of the cards out ready. So let's get the first test strip. Let's dip it all the way in. And I'm just gonna put it to the side before I actually put it on the card. Again. And again. So that's uh, dipping it in to the water. So results are in. I've emailed them to myself, I printed it off, and it basically says inhibitor levels have passed, corrosion levels have passed, pH levels have passed for all three. Even though they are all, well, not all different colours, but there are, there are some different colours in there. So uh, still passed. So that's the AD Pro check. Let's try the Scale Master now and see if that gives us any different results. Now again, if you want to see this full eye test, yeah, it's called eye test, then check out the link in the comment section below. I've got some uh, water out the tap here as my start point. I've got to clean these up and I've got to use this machine for each one of these. It's going to take me a while, so I'll get back to you soon with the results. Now the eye test results are in. Not testing your, anyway. So the three results are here and they've all passed. So the first one we can see here is the Flowmaster one. So you can see it's just about picking up inhibitor on the app. So, uh, not picked a lot up has it so next one is the Fernox one and you can see it has picked up a little bit more on the Fernox one than it did on the Flowmaster one so that's that one and then the last one is the Sentinel one which is less than the Fernox one but the Fernox one is slightly more concentrated, remember, because it does 130 litres instead of uh, 100 litres. So that's what that's picked up. Now, I just thought of another little test I want to do before we finish off. I'm going to see if any of these things pick up cleaner. So I'm going to get a 100 ml of water again, and I'm going to pour half a ml of cleaner in to the water, and let's see what happens there. So I've got 100 ml of water, I've got another new syringe, I've got some uh, MC3 cleaner, give it a bit of a shake, you can see it's sealed, the lid's not coming up, there you go, it's sealed still. And again we're going to get uh, half a milliliter again of the clean. So we got half a mil of the cleaner. In it goes. Exactly the same as what we did before. So 
if you just left cleaner in your system, which isn't a good idea. But let's see what these test strips and stuff actually ends up happening. So we'll start with the express inhibitors from Fernox first. Again, same thing, dip it in for a second, wipe it off, and we'll leave that for a minute. Uh, then I'll get the test strip, put that in. And leave that for a minute. And let's see what comes up with them. And then we'll do the eye test again. And the results are in. The first one's a bit worrying. <laughs> so if we take the Fernox Express, actually says there's 20 ppm of inhibitor in. See that pretty much matches that colour. It does to me anyway. Oh, that's the first one. The AD ProCheck, I've just emailed myself the results. And according to the email, it says it's passed on corrosion levels, it's passed on pH levels, but it just needs some inhibitor in. So, I guess it doesn't have any way of picking up cleaner. And uh, if we go to the final one, the eye test. You can see it says failed at the top there, so if I click on that one and you can see there it's, uh, you can look at the line, only just over the water side of it so that's saying there's going to be a chance of corrosion and no inhibitor in there so uh, obviously <laughs> These are my tests, <laughs> they're not conclusive tests, but it's just something that's been playing on my mind for a while now. That now the part L has changed and we've now got to go to use the British standards for the way of testing the water. And we've got these different test kits. Is it going to cause a load of problems in the future? Now, if you just use the test, these test things and because uh, you, you can put this on an app and send it off and all the results. And then the following year, somebody goes to service it and uses this test and it shows up something completely different. Is that going to cause problems for the engineer who originally installed the uh, appliance? That's what's worrying me with this chemical testing. Being able to test it ourselves, is it the right way of doing it? Should we be sending them off to a lab to be tested? Obviously that's more expense, but is it going to cause problems with manufacturers in the future? Are they going to say it's corro it's not working because it's corroded the boiler inside because you haven't done put enough inhibitor in? Yet you've got a test result to show that. Now that's the thing what's worrying me and I guess it could be worrying you guys out there. So if you are a gas engineer, are you worried about these tests and what the results may be? Now, this is just a bit of fun, guys. Well, it is for me anyway, not about you. Uh, just to see what the difference was with them. But do you think it's going to be a problem? And if you do, stick it in those comments down below and let's find out exactly what you guys think.